The big wins are piling up at LiDAR maker Luminar, most recently one notable deal with surging chip seller NVIDIA. These deals are overshadowing the company's earnings out last night. So let's dive in here with Luminar founder and CEO Austin Russell. Uh, Austin, always good to see you. Happy Friday to you. One thing that we haven't talked about, we've been talking to you uh, really since you uh, had the IPO late last year, is an emerging truck strategy. You talked a little bit about this on the earnings call last night. What are your plans in the truck market and, and how might they unfold next year? Yeah, so, so huge believer in the autonomous trucking market. I think there's definitely a major opportunity there. And this is something that we've been heavily capitalizing on. Uh, you know, we just had a couple of great wins with, uh, you know, two of the top autonomous trucking players, you know, just in the, uh, in, the in this past quarter. So uh, that, that's only been accelerating for that matter. Um, but uh, uh, I think as we face like global supply chain logistics challenges, all the more important, but, you know, I mean, compounding on that, you know, we're talking a, a number of other wins, you know, NVIDIA, Polestar, Webasto and Alpha, and, uh, you know, seeing Mobileye launch their car was uh, it's fantastic too. So there's uh, there's no shortage of traction. It certainly exceeded our expectation. And uh, that's why we also had, had, had raised the, um, uh, the guidance for the commercial wins um, and everything else has otherwise been in line for meeting our, our key milestones and meeting or beating all of them that we had outlined on the poll. And, and Austin, it does look like that the revenue missed by a little bit, but it sounds like from what you're saying that most of that's going to be pushed forward in terms of, uh, of revenue gains. Right, right. So, so we, we don't provide uh, quarterly guidance, you know, for for specifics on revenue. Uh, we do yearly, so we remain fully on track for the uh, for the raised guidance that we had for the year. And uh, for that matter, it was actually directly in line with the uh, internal, um, you know, estimate and forecast that we had. But uh, but yes, so so that's that's fully on track and fully to uh, expectation with what we're going for. But at the same time, um, I, I think the reality is is that. Uh, you know, for things like financials and revenues and other stuff at this stage, it's, it, it's more of just uh, about, you know, programs that you're working with today. The, the real, the, the serious numbers that you're talking about are after you start scaling up in series production. And, and, and that's really the, the significance of, of, of the wins that we've had is that we're really the first and only company to actually be able to enable autonomous vehicles into series production, enabling that level of capability. And, and, that, and that's part of what, what we're launching with um, you know, our uh, startup production before the end of next year. So it'll be great to see that happen. And, and with some of these wins, it's good. And uh, with things like the NVIDIA, uh, when they announced uh, just a couple of days ago, that, that's only accelerating that as well. And Austin, so you talked about those series numbers or when you get to that scaled production. When do you really expect that to be reflected in some of Luminar's top line numbers here? Yeah, I mean, I really think by 2023, that's when it starts really accelerating um, with all this. You know, we, we've, we've landed some of the, the biggest deals in the industry, uh, you know, and, and, and certainly the biggest of their kind, like, say, standardizing on, on Volvo vehicles uh, to be able to actually get out there now having uh, new vehicles rolling off the line with Luminar embedded into it as a default you know, safety standard, it, it really makes all the difference. Um, but, uh, but you know, we're continuing to see huge compounding effects. You know, the, the NVIDIA news that we had is, is going to be launching in, uh, in 2024 as it's already getting designed into automakers and programs. So that's, that's, that's been, uh, been super exciting. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the great thing about this, in this space is, is that, you know, it's very high barrier to entry, but equivalently very high barrier to exit. So, you know, these design ones, uh, you know, make all the difference. And uh, that's what we've been dominating in the larger landscape. Awesome. This Rivian IPO has captivated a lot of folks uh, in, on the street, to say the very least. Is part of the optimism with Rivian, Polestar, I'll, I'll even include in there, is that enthusiasm reflect the reality that maybe 10 years from now, we're not driving cars. They're just driving by themselves, and we're all going to need new cars uh, and a whole lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, the Rivian IPO is de definitely interesting. It's awesome to see the success there too, and I think it just goes to show the level of disruption that's happening in this industry and 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 uh, the opportunity that that everyone has ahead. So, uh, you know, I, I I I think obviously when it comes down to it, there's a lot left to be able to deliver in in those cases. And um, you know, I mean, we've largely the focus for us has largely been on the big you know, more legacy automakers. You know, when it comes down to it, just because that's where the high volume is right now. I mean. As it stands today, we get paid the same amount whether it goes on, you know, regardless of what branded vehicle it goes on. So you want to you want to go for the ones that have that have uh, the the biggest opportunities. But um, but that said, uh, you know, it, I think I think it's a, a pretty promising. And um, you know, when it when it comes down to it, it's really just feeds into that broader thematic of uh, of of the level of interest of, of what can be done. And I, I think it's 
uh, it's super exciting to say, I, I think, um, and, you know, I mean, with the interest of that, and even just like when you have these kinds of news announcements, like, you know, with, with NVIDIA, I, I think uh, I, I, I actually uh, our, our team maybe 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 heard from uh, from you, Brian, that uh, the laser ticker was the most searched or trending that morning, you know, at, at that time, which was kind of kind of wild. You got that right. I, 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 I did email that. you guys. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. And Austin, you alluded to this earlier in one of your answers, but how have supply chain disruptions and shortages impacted your company and your manufacturing partners? And has that changed any of your timelines? Yeah, so uh, we, actually one of the big milestones that we had uh, and, and that we are announcing uh, this quarter is that we've successfully secured the supply chain for uh, next year and basically going through that process uh, leading up to series production. That's a really important point. Uh, we've been putting all the infrastructure into place and fortunately we, we have something that we have a lot of visibility um, you know, and going years out, you know, we're not we're not a traditional OEM in the sense that we have that day-to-day -day grind. We can actually focus on uh, like our day-to-day -day grind is focusing on launching these kinds of next generation capabilities. And that's what makes all the difference. And we've made some strategic acquisitions along the way to be able to secure critical parts of the supply chain. Most recently, we've successfully integrated this acquisition uh, called Optigration. They make this specialized indium gallium arsenide chip that we use in our product and, uh, you know, are continuing to iterate on. And, and, and that's something that, you know, we, we can scale up to, you know, a million plus uh, units a year uh, when, when it comes down to with, with this capacity. So um, that, that's what makes all the difference. And having that ownership around it uh, absolutely secures and guarantees our future, at least for some of the most challenging components around it. And uh, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty good. Hey, Austin, you know, we've talked to you a bunch of times now. I think you've been a public company for a little over four months, if I, if I have that right. I mean, uh, you know, it's, you're, it, you're, it's been uh, it, it was it was end of last year. So so it's, it's, so it's, a, it's, it's excuse it's, me, excuse me. Time flies. 11 right? months, <laughs> 11 months. It does. Um, so if we're looking at that timeline, you're a young guy, you're in your mid 20s, you're running this buzzy company. I, I'm just curious how how you feeling, like what are some <laughs> of the lessons you've learned? And also, as we look at to again, bring up Rivian, I mean, there's another young guy running a very buzzy comp company. Given what you have learned thus far, any, I don't know if you know RJ Scaring or if you guys talk, but you know, what kind of advice you would give him now having run a public company for a bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to meet him in person sometime soon too. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. But um, I, I think, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, obviously, uh, I was fortunate enough to get a, a head start, you know, with 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 all of this, and uh, at a pretty early age. And and this is where I think you just have to be able to stay heads down, focused, and and strategize around how, how you want to build and scale a business from an entrepreneurial perspective. And I mean, I think in this case, um, obviously, you had a lot of conviction in terms of what the right approach is. You you'll always have your skeptics along the way. You always have uh, you know, di different folks. It's like, okay, well, can you really pull this off? You know, this sounds crazy. Um, and you know, can you, can you really try and compete with some of the biggest companies in the, in the, in the world that are trying to do these kinds of things? And uh, I think that that clear answer that resonated is, is yes. And now our opportunity head is, is not just to compete, but to win. And uh, that's exactly what we've been doing along the way. So, um, I, I, I'd say, uh, yeah, have, have, having a great time with it. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of, of, of lessons, um, I mean, obviously, uh, number one is, is or maybe not obviously, it's, uh, I think a lot of people get accused from this, is focus. Uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you have the tech, you really believe in it and everything, at least in this industry, you have to be able to focus on execution, focus on delivering, focus on scaling, um, you know, and not, not, not drown yourself out with, uh, with, with, with too much. And this is a, a really important point in terms of why we started with the foundation of this breakthrough LIDAR. It took, you know, this stuff doesn't happen overnight, right? You know, it, 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 it's taken almost a decade uh, to be able to get to this stage, to get to get to where we are, and to be able to see the scale up, so uh, that I, we think that's that's what makes all the difference. And then, um, yeah, I mean, from from a uh, from a um, like a, a market perspective, that was one of the things that it learns is that you know it's 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 uh, it's almost interesting to see from a. Um, uh, you, you can never use that as a fundamental metric of value of everything that you're doing or what, what, what you're doing and whatnot. I mean, uh, I'd say it, it's a great long-term indicator. It's not a great short-term indicator with that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me to see how like, you know, it, it, efficient or inefficient, you know, different markets can be in different cases. And also from a fundamental value proposition perspective, just the opportunity like that, if you execute, if you deliver, if you can do this, 
you know, that's how you see the amazing 10x, 100x growth stories. And, you know, to folks like Tesla's credit and, uh, you know, even Rivian now too, you know, they've been, they've been following that trajectory. Awesome. Before we let you go here, uh, you're, you're going to be presenting at CES. You want to unveil everything uh, to us right now. <laughs> exactly. We, we got, we got, we're going to have a lot going on. So, uh, so yeah, if, if any of you guys are uh, planning on going to CES, it'll be a, uh, It'll be a cool show. We're going to have some uh, interactive demos, I think, unlike anything that's been presented at that show okay. before or anywhere. Ha had, to, had to ask. Thanks, as always, for answering our emails. Luminar founder and CEO, Austin Russell. <laughs> have a great weekend.